do meeting your goals? What was the hardest thing this week? What was the hardest thing to do? Meeting your goal. Getting on my treadmill. <laughs> When you, when you feel that shaky that you're used to going to a carb for, um, I would go to a protein. Mm -hmm. You know, package almonds, nuts, whatever. You know, package those. Get the, have those ready. Have them ready to go. You're actually, you can get over the carby shakes with high quality protein, but your automatic assumption is because in the past, every time you've done this, you've eaten a carb, that the carb is going to be what fixes it. It's not necessarily true. Well, what else was hard, ladies? Well, I told you. You said giving up sweets. Yeah. It was that tradition. Oh, yeah. Tradition. It was the tradition. Yeah. Yeah. And something oh, sweet to go with it in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. What else? Just avoiding sugar. Yeah. yeah. We had fajitas on. Okay, over the weekend. Don't ask me what day it was. We had fajitas, and um, there was sugar in the, in the canned beans. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the beans. Yeah, yeah. yeah in the yeah. beans. And so I, I got mild chili beans. So in canned yeah. beans. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah. Yeah. okay. So I guess. You had to buy the plain beans and chili them yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's just, it's just, it's just I like, have a funny story. I got sick this past week, and guess what has sugar in it? Cough syrup has a ton. It made me so sick. It upset my stomach while I was already sick. I was like, make it stop. Yeah, wow. It's terrible. Switch to cough yeah. syrup. Mucinex, yeah, because it was a pill and it didn't have the sugar stuff in it. Wow. Because I was like, well, I tried to sleep and my stomach was so upset. I couldn't. Cough syrup. Okay. So the next question is, what was the easy? Tell me something that was easier than you thought. I won't say it was the easiest, but it was easier than you thought. Anything? Finding good things to eat, even in you know challenging situations that you're not like. We were helping our kids move this weekend, and. I walked to the I walked to the gas station mm -hmm. from their house to get something, you know, because I was like, oh, I really need to eat, and you're like, oh, you're fine at the gas yeah. station. But it was a sheet, and I looked around, and it was like, oh, there's cheese, oh, there's fresh fruit that's cut up, oh, there's, mm -hmm. you know, so I kind of walked in going, oh man, I really don't want to buy that protein bar that I'm going to start tasting, and go, oh, what have I done this again? <laughs> and um, you know, and that's I awesome. was able to find stuff there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Sticking to my shopping list and not getting diverted by the donuts and other that's why they're like healthy foods. <laughs> that's true. That's two of you. <laughs> making a list help. And making a list does help. Don nice. makes a list. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. Okay. Uh, Don, we have a ping pong table downstairs and a treadmill. Uh, we went back to playing ping pong we have together. It's Aww. exercise. Yeah. I beat mean, Donald two games to two. <laughs> <laughs> That's some, that is some good positive reinforcement there. <laughs> good, good. I'd like to do more treadmill, but the last time we did it, uh, we were doing half an hour, and I just hurt. So I'm thinking, cut it down time-wise and mm -hmm. see what happens. What I would love you all to do if you start something new is to make it your first goal so simple that there's no way you can't achieve it. Yeah. So if you say, I'm going to get on this treadmill for five minutes, guess what? That is so achievable. And just build it from there. Okay, make it, you know, like beginning to read. Half an hour mm -hmm. is too much at my, first. My, I was hurting. So yeah. And then, and then you're going to hurt. It. Yeah. So I would start small and make it so you there's no way you can't achieve that goal. It's like you know, it's like learning to read. You don't want to give a kid an encyclopedia. You give them the easiest thing and you build so you build success. Okay. I would I would often say that 
I'd be like, okay, I'm going to get on the treadmill. I give myself permission to get off after 10 minutes. And then usually what would happen is after I've been off for 10 minutes, I was fine and I just kept going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, that's all part of the knowing what works for you. Going, okay, I'm going to tell myself. I used to put Whatever. my phone over the minute count online. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't see it? Mm -hmm. Because if I was watching the clock, especially if I had a countdown on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got like, it was five, five, I didn't know where I was at, especially if there was like a TV or red music playing. I'd just be like, yeah, yeah. I'd have to read yeah. something or watch it. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Oh, I would put on, when we had a tournament, I'd put on like the old musicals, you know, Oscar and Hamas thing. Well, that's great. That's mm -hmm. great. Was there anything you were surprised by that isn't covered here? I cut sugar out of like my coffee and... Not totally. I mean, right. like I was like I was telling Jesse, I didn't really need labels and stuff like that. But I was trying to be aware. Mm -hmm. I found that easy to be aware. Yeah, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. I wasn't aware. Eat whatever, grab whatever. But I'm just being aware, more aware of how yeah. back. And, oh yeah, you got to start there because you know that adding vegetable, we added more vegetables. Have you tried yeah. switching and like adding honey or something? I else did that with my coffee. I did that at first. I was adding honey um, into the coffee, which I thought that might be too Yeah, yeah. 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 it does have a slightly different taste. But I really, I didn't put enough. I don't, I think, mm -hmm. to really do much. So mm -hmm. it's just yeah. enough to help the brain. I think, and then like tonight, I had coffee with no sugar. So I'm, I think I can do without sugar, without anything. And that was really quick, so Joy. <laughs> that was really quick. quick. I do have to have my cream or milk, or you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Fine. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would encourage half, just go straight half and half or heavy whipping cream rather than the flavored things. Okay, so do you feel comfortable with your goals? Are you going to tweak your goals? Somebody mentioned tweaking their goal just a little bit. Everybody okay with tweaking your main goals? You're good? Go? All right. Okay. So your homework, your home thought work was how have you handled changes in the past and what strategies have you helped? So what have you done in the past that's worked for you? Some people journals, some people make checklists. Visualization, you know, like we have a picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a picture of something that, you know, you know, um, like what you want to, you know, how fit you want to Z or S. something like that. You know, what, um, Z. Z. So visualization. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think, you know, nowadays they talk about visualization boards. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's like the yeah. thing. And and for somebody like me who's visual, that does right. work. It's right. amazing. When you're looking at those pictures every right. single day, it starts to, Good. you know. Good. It, it really is all about knowing yourself and what works for you. What else? Virginia? Well, having Donald there with me, mm -hmm. having a He's your He's your accountable. Yeah. yeah. There's no getting away with anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> no here. I no. have that. I've always yeah, had success yeah. with journaling. Okay. Food journals and, and exercise journals. I've never done that before, but I started writing down this week everything I ate. I was, I was sat a few days out into it. I thought, oh, I'm going to eat. Okay, breakfast. You know, I ate breakfast or not. I ate coffee. And after looking at it, after I thought something, I had a lot of food, but I really didn't. It's like, it, I mean, it's like I felt like I was It's eye-opening, isn't it? I was, it wasn't a lot, but I think it was just I was eating more intermittently, I guess, and not like... It does, it does as um, much as maybe I focus. Without thinking about it. Right, it does focus so you're like more aware. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a friend one time who just took a picture of everything she ate huh. as a weight loss program and put it on Facebook so she'd admit to the world what she was actually eating. I thought, <laughs> well, that's really brave. Okay. <laughs> I think I've been writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Just taking a picture. Yeah, she just took a picture. Yeah, I would do that yeah. before I'd write it down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's just. Make sure stop and think. I almost took a picture of my lunch today, but I thought, well, that would be really weird, so. There you go. Now you know. It's, no, it's, it's not weird. Okay. <laughs> it's a trend. I know it's a trend. I've seen it on Facebook. It was not a really attractive lunch. It was really good. <laughs> you don't have to share it with anyone. There's no rule. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you can just take the picture for yourself. Okay. I got it. Okay. okay. So here you go. Here is the, um, yeah, the dream world that nobody lived in, right? <laughs> I mean, you didn't live in this dream world, right? Nobody in my family cooked. You're going to be kidding me. Anyway. Okay. I kind of do. Sorry. Okay. But, I mean, I think it just shows our association of food with 
other things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it shows that, oh, yeah, we'd like to gather, you know, that we'd like to gather all around. Um, so I was telling you a little last week about that Cooking for Geeks book <laughs> by Jeff Potter, and he lists five types of cooks. And we talked a little bit about if you were a giving cook, that you expressed your love through food and baking in particular, that you were going to have a little harder time unwinding that emotional entanglement. Was there a selfish cook in that book? Um, I agree. <laughs> there was the healthy, there was the methodical, Nope. there was the innovative, and there was the competitive. No selfish cook? I cook it and I want it all for myself, and I don't care. I hide it in the back of the fridge. <laughs> Yeah, I, I used to do that all the time. Um, now, yeah, anyway. Since I got allergic to soy and had to give up M&M's, I don't hide the M&M's all over the house anymore. So, anyway. I do still hide. Well, now I have to buy hot, really expensive high-end chocolate, though. And those are worth hiding, too. And I do hide those. So I'm not the only person. No, okay. okay. No, 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 no. No. So there's a lot of studies about emotional eating, and you've heard all this stuff before. And emotional eating is generally understood to be, you're, you know, you need something and you go straight to the sweets and carbs. Mm -hmm. But, there, you know, in all the studies that they've been doing, um, it, it's actually way more than that. Okay, so here's your Real Science Direct article. Basically what it says is, your mood actually affects your long-term thinking so that if you're in a good mood, you can think through the consequences of choosing food. So in other words, you're in a good mood, you go, yes, I know this pepper and hummus are healthier for me than that donut, and you can choose that. If you're in a, a, a worse mood or a depressed mood or a bad mood, it affects your, your reasoning ability to reason out the end results of that. Mm. And that's a scientific fact. Isn't that interesting? Self, you go into a self-destructive... Well, you've lost that ability to reason through the consequences of your behavior is what it's saying. Mm -hmm. And you're more likely to make poor choices. And so choices. you're more likely to make these poor choices because you're not seeing the long term. Which, I mean, you know, it's true. If you know people that are depressed, this is true. It's a PMS eating thing, too. Like, you're moody, you don't feel well. Exactly. So Just get out of my way. Give me yeah. the chocolate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is why I like the chocolate. What is the problem? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> then I looked up stuff on actual binging on sugar. Um, indeed, it is scientifically proven to boost your mood temporarily mm -hmm. before your sugar crash. Then, which was really interesting, um, is that there are certain types of sugar that your body does not receive the I've had enough signals for. So, um, like fructose never gives off that signal that you've had enough. Mm -hmm. Glucose will give off that signal, but the problem becomes when most of your processed foods have sucralose, which is half fructose in it. Mm -hmm. So every processed food you're having, sucralose. which is full of sugar, is full of the sugar that's not telling you that's enough. And so this is the scientific proof behind this stuff. Um, and then this next slide is, um, and you can Google this. So I actually found a chart that had 61 different names for different names for sugar. So if you Google that, you'll find a chart. So I mean, all these things are sugar. And I'm not saying I don't eat any of these. Like I, I happen to do honey and molasses and maple syrup. This happened to be what I've chosen to do in, in my life. So then there's this, um, this again, this one of the um, PubMed and NIH research where the scientists do the, do the studies in the controlled scientific way and then publicize the results. So basically, they're, they um, were seeing how addictive sugar was. So they found it induces reward and craving that are comparable in magnitude to those induced by addictive drugs. They want to say that this research has revealed that sugar and sugar and sweet reward can not only substitute to addictive drugs like cocaine, but can be even more rewarding and attractive. The biological robustness of this 
is sufficient to explain why many people have difficulty to control the consumptions of foods high in sugar and when continuously exposed to them. So it's not just your lack of self-control. You know? You know, there's some freedom in that. It's not you not having self-control. It is the way that stuff is made, and it's the way it reacts in you. And when you say sugar, you mean the, all the ones that were on that list mm -hmm. will are addictive. Um, the white sugar is particularly, I think when they studied, they studied the white sugar. The white sugar. They didn't necessarily study honey and molasses and mm -hmm. right. maple syrup and so that kind of that's stuff. That's what I was wondering. Those, is yeah, those have different... Yeah, I think when they studied, they were studying the white sugar, um, or the high, they can study the high fructose corn syrup. Okay, so let's, I'm going to kind of flip-flop between information and interaction. So, the ambivalence, did you hear your mind telling you, I don't want, I do this, but, did you hear that in your head this week? That's like, yep. I was walking to the gas station thinking, you know, I don't think I'm going to be I go by those little malt orange pumpkins that they have in the Halloween section. <laughs> I have a mild addiction to those. <laughs> and it's funny because I, I did buy a bag a couple weeks ago and very slowly ate it. And like it's funny because they don't taste as good as they used to to me. Like I, I, I was eating them and I was just like, wow, these just don't taste the same as yeah. they used to. What's happening? <laughs> so, um, and it was kind of funny because it used to be I got those. I got a bag every October. That was like my treat was one bag of little orange disgusting pumpkins. <laughs> so, um, yeah, little orange Brock's candy pumpkins. They're just pure sugar. So, um, like the candy corn only in pumpkin juice. Yeah, it's basically. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> but they, they taste better than the candy corn. <laughs> so, but yeah, and, and so like I, I remember seeing them again this week. I was just like, no, I must keep walking. <laughs> well, your taste buds by this point have probably changed enough. Yeah, so it's kind of funny because even though I got in the bag, and even though I was like, they don't taste as good, there was part of me that still kind of wanted to get them. Yeah, it's, just it's because wrapping that it's, 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 it's what I do every October is by the habit thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thing. And it's only a once a year kind of thing, but it's still just kind of like. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm giving the, the Halloween candy aisle a very wide berth at the moment. Very wide berth. <laughs> yes. You gotta know, watch when we go into Target. She sidles a little bit. <laughs> She's watched me do this for us. Look at it. Go this way. <laughs> exactly. There's been times exactly. where I walk by the exactly. aisle and I just stop and just look at it and I have like this mental battle with myself and I'm like, I'm moving really, on. It's really funny, she'll go. Okay. <laughs> she'll look at it with her head. Alright. Alright, so yeah, just keep being aware that you're gonna this ambivalence, this is the kicker. This is the hard part to get over. And you're gonna keep hearing it in your head. So I want to talk a little bit about inflammation and what inflammation means. It can go from cellular level up, okay? So this doctor in South Carolina um, scored 41 foods based on the effects of inflammation. And he studied a lot of other studies. Um, and he found that carbohydrates, fat, and cholesterol were among the food components, components most likely to encourage inflammation. What was that again? Cholesterol fat and carbohydrates. Now that's a real surprise. The carbohydrates lead to inflammation, right? You're just horribly shocked at that news, I'm sure. <laughs> well, funny, all these vitamins, they, they did, weren't inflammatory. Funny how that works. Tea? Tea. So your 10 best anti-inflammatory foods, salmon, berries, green leafy vegetables, all your cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables, which are very low in carbs. Um, 
and all your deeply pigmented produce, all, you know, they tell you all that, the rich colors, mm -hmm. that is true. Peppers, sweet potatoes, all that stuff, nuts, whole grains, those are all anti-inflammatory. Inflamma the worst ones that cause inflammation, desserts made with lots of sugar, sweet <laughs> cereals, no kidding. The whites, we, I call them the great white sharks. White rice, white bread, white potato. Um, white potatoes, I'm going to take a little issue on, but because they have enough fiber in them. The rest of these things don't have that fiber. Um, a lot of people dis potatoes, but um, if you're eating them as a potato and not a french fry or a chip, it's an entirely different ballgame. That said, I encourage everybody that's really trying to do this fast and this rapidly to be careful at how many potatoes they eat until they get to be where they want to be. Once you're where you want to be, I eat potatoes like two meals a day. Paul used to go to farmer's market, you know Paul, that concave stomach. He'd be like, people would be like, I don't want to eat this potato. He'd be like, I eat potatoes every day. And this concave stomach. <laughs> drinks, anything with high fructose corn syrup, so it'll be almost anything you find with the barcode, um, all your processed meats, um, french fries, potato chips, so those are all highly refined um, fast foods, margarines, and organ meats, which I thought was interesting. Huh. I have a personal thing against organ meats because, especially like liver, because to me the liver is to clean out your bloodstream and I really don't want all that stuff you got cleaned out of your bloodstream going into mine. That's my personal take on it. What about sausage? You're talking about sausage. Um, I, I get, or... yeah, I get nitrate free sausage That's because right. I get my pork by a half a hog. So if you can find sources for these things okay. that are without all the additives. So read the labels. Yeah. 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 Margaret, so you talk about margarine. I eat butter. Good. So butter is? Butter's better. Yeah. Significantly better than margarine. Oh, definitely. Anything hydrogenated and stable at room temperature has had hydrogen atoms injected into it. So another website, goodfeeding.com, there was a lady, um, she took a, she was a master of nutrition and she has this free downloadable book. And she also has this great explanation if you're of a scientific mind for acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. And she's, so inflammation can be from cellular level all the way to what you commonly think of, you know, the bursitis in your, so it goes all the way up. So basically as you eat these things and ingest these inflammatory, it affects your liver enzymes and it circles back around and it becomes this never ending circle. So anyway, here's, here's more of what she says on her website. So again, it's not just arthritis, it's a low grade inflammation on the cellular level. And so all these things are related to inflammation, which is related to what you eat, specifically oils that you eat. Specifically related to the oils? Oils. And there's other top ten things, but there's a whole lot of hidden oil that's highly inflammatory. I did not know that. That's a new one. So, heard of omega-6, omega-3s. You've heard of these things. So omega-6 is called essential because your body can't make it. Vitamin D is essential your body can't make it unless you sunshine. Um, so you have to get it through food. Omega-6s do have a role in brain growth and normal growth and development um, and all that stuff. But the healthy diet has to have that balance of omega-3s and omega-6s. Your omega-3s are the good oils. We'll get, I'll give you a whole chart. Omega-3s help reduce inflammation. Help reduce. reduce. Omega-3 reduces inflammation. Omega-6s tend to promote inflammation. Um, 
A typical American diet contains 14 to 25 times more omega-6s than omega-3s. For example, the Mediterranean diet where they only use olive oil and they don't have huge amounts of meat. Um, and I was really happy to see that the grass-fed beef has the more favorable omega-3 to omega-6. So, you should say to yourself, but I don't eat that much stuff. I can pretty well assure you, if you go out to eat anywhere, their chances are they're cooking in vegetable oil, which is, which is soybean oil. If you start to try to flip your containers of salad dressing around to avoid canola and soybean, mm -hmm. um, so if you want something with only olive oil and a salad dressing, yeah. you need a recipe. Yeah. So, um, so there, there you go. There's the omega six, omega six content, which is the one we don't want, versus the omega three content. Um, so, and, but that's not like a complete thing of all the lists. But agriculturally speaking, soybeans and corn. Not only are they highly subsidized in farm cropping, um, they are uh, genetically modified, so they're Roundup resistant. Roundup resistance means that they've spliced the gene to accept the herbicide Roundup, so that when they plant the corn and the soy, they can, when it comes up, they can overspray and kill the weeds in between. That is what. Roundup ready corn is Roundup ready soybeans. That's what they are. Both of those, the production in the United States is in the 90 percentile, 90 91, one's 91, one's 97, I forget which is which, percent of corn and soy grown in this country are indeed of the Roundup ready variety. So, not only are these highly inflammatory, you might perhaps be thinking that you didn't want to ingest Roundup or herbicides yourself. There's now double stacking and triple stacking on these things as well. Um, as a side note, the, uh, I, this person's not even somebody I don't even know. Oh, the, um, the wheat harvest is being treated. Now, wheat is not genetically modified to accept Roundup. So, but what's happening in practice is, and, and the Wheat Council website will tell you that this happens very rarely. I will tell you that we drove from Virginia to Saskatchewan last summer, and there wasn't a wheat field we passed that had not been oversprayed with Roundup to kill off the wheat so it comes dropped to the point of dryness so it can all be harvested at the same time. So, you want to know why people are reacting to gluten? It, May just be perhaps, perhaps the herbicide ingestion has reached a limit in our little bodies and they're rebelling. Maybe. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, so that's just a side note for those things. So this was interesting because this gives you an omega 9s, they're actually qualifying as an unsaturated fat from vegetable and animal sources. It's considered good. So that's omega-9 and that's that yellow. <clears throat> so you can see that when people tell you that canola oil is not that bad, what they're saying is it's really not that high in those omega-3s. It's only 11%. Oh no, it's got 11% omega-3s. So that's, you know, omega-3s, that's what we're after, right? Well, you know, 21% omega-6, it's a little dicey. And then omega-9s are pretty high. Um, it's, it's also fairly highly sprayed. Um, you can get some, most of it's grown in um, the Dakotas and Canada. And so you can find some in Canada. You can find organic canola. Um, you know, and then they'll say safflower is not as bad as the rest. I'm not sure I'm necessarily agreeing with all these. I'm just telling you, you'll hear these arguments. Um, But um, I really kind of prefer, like when you look at the mix of olive oil, compare that to 
olive oils mid down. If you compare that, you know, to say what's above or below it, you know. So the blue is what you're trying to avoid. That blue graphic. You're trying to avoid the blue. So a lot of the so a lot of the medical profession is still kind of dissing on coconut oil at the bottom because of the pure saturated fat amount. That's why they're objecting to it. I'm not necessarily saying I agree with that because I do use coconut oil. Um, I find you don't really hardly need hardly any coconut oil to accomplish what you're accomplishing. Um, so you do get away with a lot. So my my personal oil recommendations are olive coconut. And I do use avocado for, which isn't one of I use avocado for the high heat. Um, anyway, so that's, and again, if you're reading your labels, um, unless something came over from Italy, it's going to be pretty hard to find it with only olive oil in it. Even olive oil? Olive oil? Olive oil's but I mean, as far as a food product made. That might be made from it. And it's, you know, like, so big, have, like big crackers that are made from olive oil are probably not. It's like stuff like that. Oh. It's got labels. Well, no, I mean, I'm oh, asking. It has some olive oil in there, it's but it's exactly way down on the list. Yeah. It's, yeah, the, the yeah. mayonnaise with olive oil, the olive oil is way down on the list. It's still. There's still canola or something in it. It's still soybean and canola still in it. Yeah. So it's still. Deceptive. Remember, you're on a journey. You lose your way, you fall off the cliff, just climb back on. It's not a, it's a long progression. It's just not an instant. Okay, so look at your week ahead. Here's your minefield. We really want to avoid this minefield this week. <laughs> so, you're going to need to be, so this is your, your, thinking through what your minefields are for this week, <laughs> how you can plan ahead and avoid them, or how you can compensate for them. I was just wondering where that was. Not that I was going to go there, but I was <laughs> <laughs> where is this lovely looking place? <laughs> well, just curious, you know. Where are the no, front lines? It's a free, free picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, and compensating for them is an acceptable thing. Like, we have this big dinner Saturday night farm to table dinner and feeding, you know, I'm in charge of feeding 120 <laughs> people and there's going to be like five kinds of desserts. Sure, we're going to have some, but you can plan ahead, you know, and really be diligent the rest of the week. So, you know, I can, you know what I mean. You just, it's, it's thinking ahead, compensating. So your thought work for this week. Um, so, in your dream world, when you reach your goal, what does that look like for you? That's what I want you to write out. What's it going to be like when you reach your goals? Does that make sense? Better. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy. I mean, that's, you know, because these are the things you want to keep in your mind. You want to keep in your mind what your goal is, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, right. All those things, all the things that you want in your dream world, you know. Um, so that's your thought work for this upcoming week. So now we have time for questions, discussions. <laughs>
<laughs> on that. Yeah. Some people have better success having theirs removed than others. Mm -hmm. um. All right, so questions for me. Frustrations for me. <laughs> so, oh, I was going to say, like, I've noticed, so all of my, like, dietary changes started a few years ago from, actually, I was pregnant with Chown, so it's been, long, it's been almost five years. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought I was having, like, labor pains, and they actually said that I had constipation-induced IBS. And they said it was all, like, dietary-related. And so, of course, they're like, all red sauces, all coffee, caffeine, dark chocolate, like all the things, you know, no yeah. red meat, cut out gluten, cut out dairy, and then start from scratch, like put everything back in. So at that point, I'm pregnant. Starving. <laughs> like, yeah, like, okay, I work at a restaurant, I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, that was nice. Like, okay. Great timing, yeah. <laughs> you know that I live off of like having a cup of soup or a salad with bread, like for my dinner every night. <laughs> but um, I did, I did, and um, like, you know, putting gluten back in wasn't a problem, but I found that red meats did not sit well. I found that um, eggs were terrible and dairy. Like, and I knew dairy was the problem. Like, I, it, it was just kind of like, I didn't do a lot of it, so I avoided it, but when I did, that was miserable. Yeah. So with this, you know, I've really like been careful with dairy for a few years. After I had him, like it was bad during my pregnancy, and then after I had him, I um, definitely like, you know, I got back in shape, and so I'm eating better, and I've got really yeah. good. And like, you know, nine months into that, you get back into normal life, and I started eating whatever, and I started having, like, the bands of pain again. And I'm not, you know, at this point, I'm not pregnant, but it was so painful, it felt like contraction pains in my upper abdomen. So I went to the doctor, and they actually did, like, CAT scan on me. Like, they did everything. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing. This is an IBS thing. There's constipation. Like, it's dietary. And um, so I stopped really eating red meat at all, because that would really hurt me and then really avoided dairy unless I was just enjoying it for something. But as of January when I stopped eating meat and dairy, um, I have noticed I feel so much better and I have so much more energy. But it took a while. You know, at first it's just like, okay, what are we having for dinner? We're sick of these few things. The kids are already like, let's feed them something and we'll have guacamole and chips. Like that, you know, it's hard, but we've, we're kind of getting past that. So I'm still, like, I'm feeling, I feel great, I have a lot more energy, but I'm noticing, I'm like, I still have something. Mm. And I'm, I'm really, in the past, like, two months, it's, like, when I eat out, it's oil, it is the oils in the food that's fast, like, Bob, we don't cook in this stuff at home. Mm. And I feel, I feel awful. I don't get, like, the, the pain stuff hasn't right. bothered me in mm -hmm. a year. Right. But I feel like crap. Yeah. So I'm, I think, and, like, you know, you giving us more information on it, like, I really am yeah. thinking that it, like, and it's not, you know, my stomach feels bad, I'll get gassy, but I just feel bad all the other. I feel foggy and I feel yucky. Yeah. So, and I guess the more you take away, then you have these things that really affect you. It's, it's, so. a, it's a frustration. Yeah. You know, it's a frustration. When you brought up the oil, like, I had no clue that the oils would yeah. cause mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of, I've yeah. never even. Well, I remember when Beverly first started, she just had this tiny, I mean, she like gave up everything. She she went two weeks boot camp. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, she called me one day and she says, "My stomach is killing me. I just had this half of a gluten free graham cracker, one bite, and I feel terrible." And and I had just been reading about the interaction between the oil and the sugar and gluten and how sometimes the combination of the three, they can't pinpoint and define it all, but sometimes that combination is tearing people up. Um, well, yeah. I wanted to blame it on the breads for, you know, like, oh, it's we. I had too much bread, I had too much flour, like, it's all, you want to blame it on that because you hear so much of it, but that does not, if I'm it's not everybody, it's, it's not, that does not, not bother everybody. me, it's and the eating like, out or, like, the poor eating at home that yeah. I feel, but so I'm, like, really, yeah. Now that I've kind of weaned yeah. so much out this year, I'm really feeling it and seeing it. Yeah. One thing that I found out, like with the gluten-free products, um, you know, like uh, King Arthur has those gluten-free muffin mixes, and it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to try that. You know, and initially I was okay, but then I just started noticing I was having like these real bad um, stomach pains and stuff. I was like, what the heck? And then I talked with Pam Reese about it, and she's like, you know, I have a friend of mine. Xanthan gum. 
because that's what they're using to um, find it. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it gives it the texture. Yeah. Yes, and mm -hmm. for some people, what they're finding out is, you see, they have to put in so much. If they're trying to compensate mm -hmm. for the flour that it's created. Some people cannot digest the. Is that, is that a standard? standard that is that um, it gives the moisture to the gluten free. So the problem with gluten free baking is it's like a brick. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the xanthan gum binds it better and yeah. gives it that texture that kind we're of used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's the good news is you only have to live in your body and you only have to do what's working for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're okay with xanthan gum, then eat it. Exactly. You know, uh, but a lot of like. So I'm not particularly any one diet, you know, I, it's more a non-denominational thing. You're going to eat what makes you feel healthy um, in an adequate proportion of healthy foods to, you know, things you add in for flavoring once you get to be, you know, where you want to be. But yeah, you only have to live with what works for you. And we're also individual, and that's why I can't just tell you, oh, this diet's going to work, this diet's going to work. Because if you step back, I mean, every diet has some really great ideas in them, and every diet has some, really? Like, really, why are you, why are you forbidding that food? You know, and, and logically, I mean, a lot of them understand why they're saying that, but I don't necessarily agree with why they're saying that. I'm not like you know we have a lot of friends that you know have gone vegan. We're just like we still eat fish, and I will have an egg, and if I want to have pizza with the kids, I'm gonna eat pizza with the kids, and like that's what works. So people ask me, yeah, and my stomach hurts, and I'm like I feel like I know, and I think like, I know what's gonna happen, but I'm like getting better. But I'm glad that I'm like finally determined. You know, I thought it was so many things for so long, yes. and I do feel better, but yeah, finally getting like, down to like, what okay, it is. Yeah, and it's hard because you grow up here, and you know. Um, so the real vegans are really anti-milk. I mean, they're anti-everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't do, so like, I can't read everything and be like, there's way in this gosh, I can't buy it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Sometimes it's just too much. It's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. Um, but on the other hand, you, you can get calcium from things other than milk, truly. It's in broccoli and stuff, you know? I mean, calcium is in plants. There's, um, but we are a result of our media culture. Our media culture has said to us that you need all this protein, and you need all this milk, and you gotta get your milk, and that's what goes with you. My mother-in-law, this is funny, my mother-in-law when I was nursing said that I needed to drink milk to make milk. <laughs> I don't think she's alone in that thought. I mean, this is the I don't older think she's, generation. No, she's not, no. They, they grew up when all this yeah. research was coming out about how great milk was for you. I'm like, well, the cow's not drinking yeah. milk. You, you, oh, it's, 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 it's like, do they know? I had to talk to dairy nursing, both of my boys. Oh, yeah. They were both very, and actually my little one was lactose intolerant. We had to have him all lactose free milk until he was two. So his whole first year of having like dairy milk, and now they just drink all the milk and they try to get them greens to like, give them calcium. He asks for milk and gets to the daycare and came drinks milk at school lunch. And I'm like, whatever, I'm not going to be like, yeah. you cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you live within, yeah, like we're within your, yeah, yeah. And, and you just have to do what's going to work for you. I do joke at him, though. But now that I don't, I'm just like, um, are you a baby cat? Do you really want milk? <laughs> I'll tease him. I'm like, just drink all the milk. <laughs> I know. The love like, just drink different milk. because of the way they treat milk now, you know, they now we used to milk the cow, mm -hmm. they'd bring it in, and mm -hmm. they would drink it that morning. Exactly. And it's not that was his job every morning. <laughs> and I feel like that's what's changed so much, right? Like, people grew up with their property, with their grass, with their few animals that ate that, that they slaughtered, that they put in their body. Like, yeah, it was so, like, minimal and so yeah. bad. And I just think that it's so... And the person down the road so different from, from cow. Your yeah. parents to you, to yeah. us, yeah. and to our children. Yeah, we, we've changed so much in such a short period of time. We've lost a lot. We've lost a lot in the industrialization. And, um, okay, what else? Well, question Maybe. about fish. Um, I don't do a whole lot of fish, and I should do more. But I love, like, salmon, and mm -hmm. I want to like fish, but I don't do it. Anyway. My question is that when 
I bought like the frozen fish, you know, like the bags, piece of the salmon and the plastic in the bag. And and people say oh, that really doesn't have much anything good in it. You know, if it's raised here in this tongue, it is that bad. Number, but tilapia eats up the scraps. So tilapia is bad. Don't eat it. <laughs> Here's some fish. <laughs> I guess, uh, education. <laughs> um, so I told you about this earlier. I have a friend that's been a lifelong vegetarian. She's now, well, lifelong vegetarian. She's a vegan now. She's in her 70s. She's had um, non-cancerous tumors in her head, pituitary gland tumors, which probably based on her diet was kept, what kept her from progressing to full-blown, you know, brain Things. Um, but she has now joined the what the vegans call the SOS club. It's no sugar, oil, or salt on her food. Oh God! Say that again. No sugar, sugar oil, oil, or salt. salt. So you can be vegan, and somebody is still going to come up to you and say, "Oh, but you need sugar and oil and salt." Do you know what I mean? There's, there, no there's always there's going to be somebody saying something. Saying something. Downing something. Downing something, yeah. Um, their logic behind the fish is that farm-raised fish in big pots and big tanks are typically fed antibiotics. So they're trying to warn you that this fish you're getting probably had antibiotics. You may take that knowledge and do what you like to with it. You know? <laughs> do the benefits of eating fish outweigh the potential level. Well, now too, you gotta you know, worry about, of course, you know, they say, of course, you gotta worry about mercury and fish and stuff like that. Well, now you even gotta worry about radiation because of Fukushima. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even eat wild salmon anymore just because you know that radiation is still pouring into the uh, Pacific Ocean. I don't trust there's, it. There's, there's always stuff we can worry about. You know what I mean? And you just have to do what's comfortable for you. Yeah. And where you are on your journey. You know, if you're at the bottom of the hill trying to clog up if fish is where you're gonna start with don't don't option. don't worry about everything right now. If there's you know, something in that category then it's to worry about yeah. where exactly it was sourced from. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I, mean, I, was, I was switching over to water from soda and I had a bottle of plastic you know, plastic bottle of water. I got scolded for drinking water out of a plastic bottle. And I looked at this person, I'm like, I'm drinking water. Dude, <laughs> give me a yeah, break. Yeah, give me a break. It's not soda. Please stop scolding me. I'm sorry I insulted you. <laughs> I had a lady at the grocery store, because there was, I had one of the kids with me, and we had a separate cart, and we had the 35 counts of water bottles. And um, we probably had like six in our cart. I don't know. Maybe we didn't want to store them. I have no idea. But she was like, I hope you recycle. I was like, <laughs> be like, nope, everyone's going in the trap. <laughs> I, mean, I just kind of like, was like, you know, I, I moved on. I thought, it's really none of your business. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. I recycle or not. And, you know. Gosh, yeah. like I, I mean, like I said. A vegan that's going to give up salt, oil, and sugar. That's just crazy talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like so not happening, right? It's like we're obesity, like, hey, why don't you try to take these things out to start? Not like, once you take it, it's almost like a obsession with removing it, it, something. Yeah, I mean, at that point, it, I think it does become, because really, no, wait, there's nothing wrong with some olive oil. You know? So she actually eats okra raw. raw. She buys okra oh, from me and eats no. it raw. Do not eat okra raw, okay? This is the sad thing. Mean, do not eat it raw. You know, so... You will yourself. <laughs> you really will. You just... You just... You just progress on your journey and don't worry about everybody else. Roasted. That's all you could do. Don't worry, Seth, about also... This is my chance. I do like... Any vegetables you roast, I think it tastes awesome. Okay, so I gave you your, your thought work. That's how I keep brushing. We will see you all next week. Yes. I made brushes.